scones or scones. I don't want to divide the nation. Hi, my name's Andrew and I'm a chef tutor at the Waitrose and Partners Cookery School. Today I'm going to show you how to make savoury cheese scones. These are perfect for a brunch or an afternoon snack. So we're going to start off with our flour in the bowl. We've got self-raising flour here. It's a couple of large pinches of fine sea salt and then we're going to add our baking powder. For the full recipe, click the link in the description below. We're going to stir those two ingredients into the flour. It just ensures that that baking powder is fully combined as well as the salt. Popping in my butter, it's almost fridge cold. It's been out of the fridge for about five minutes or so. We're gonna start off by coating the butter in the flour. Now, if you wanted to make sweet scones, you would just leave out the cheese and I would add a couple of teaspoons of sugar just to add a little sweetness. And then the rest of the recipe is exactly the same. So a nice, easy swap there. We've got to the stage where we've got our breadcrumbs. We're gonna add our cheese in next, and we just want three quarters of this amount, and we'll use the remainder to top the scones before they go in the oven. You could use pretty much any of your favorite cheeses, as long as it's a hard cheese. So Parmesan uh, would be great here. Uh, Comte, if you're feeling a bit more indulgent. Um, but any grated hard cheese. Parmesan work really well, because it's got a, a great tang to it. We're just gonna fold this through. I'm just using my hands. So if you wanted to make these scones dairy free, you'd have to sub out some of these ingredients, but it'll absolutely work for you. Um, you can use a, a dairy free spread instead of the butter. Uh, we've got some great vegan cheeses. Some coconut based ones are gonna work really well. Um, uh, and the same goes for the milk that we're gonna add in as well. Uh, so I'm gonna work the milk into the flour mixture. I'm gonna use a knife. Just ensures by not using your hands, there's no additional heat in there. Make a little well, and we're gonna pour in all that milk. It's 150 mils. And the most efficient way of mixing is going around the outside and then through the center. Okay, so we're just gonna bring the dough together in the bowl, just pressing in to the bottom of the bowl, and as soon as it comes together, we're gonna to stop. So it's looking a bit messy at this stage, but we've got one ball of dough. I'm just gonna set that to one side and we'll just scatter the, the surface very lightly with flour. Out we come with our dough. And I'm gonna do sort of five or six kneads on the work surface. That sounds very precise, uh, but the more we knead, the tougher the scone we're gonna get. Just until you've got a smoother surface and it's slightly elastic. I'm gonna press this out with my hands on the work surface to a depth of around two centimeters. We can get our cutter ready. And we're just gonna push straight down and just gently push it out. And I flip it over. A Couple of reasons for flipping it over when we pop it onto the baking tray. Because we've pushed the cutter that way, it's gonna encourage the dough in that direction. So by flipping it over, it's gonna encourage it to continue rising that way. So you could freeze it at this stage once you've cut the dough uh, and you can cook it from frozen, just allow it another sort of three or four minutes cooking time. So this is giving me uh, around nine scones. If you wanted uh, a few more, uh, you could make them slightly smaller and then you can make around 10 to 12. We've got one final little one here. This is one I call is the chef's puck. That one you can eat straight from the oven. All we need to do now is just brush them with a little bit of uh, milk. Um, and then we'll just um, finish off with that remaining grated cheese. These are gonna go into preheated oven for 12 to 14 minutes. My favorite way of eating cheese scones is quite indulgent. I like to cut them in half, top them with a bit of ham and cheese and pop them under the grill. So my scones have beautifully risen and we've got a nice golden color on there. That's the main thing to look for to know that they're done, is the color. So these are my freshly baked cheese scones. I love them fresh from the oven with a generous amount of salted butter, uh, or equally, you could serve them with some cream cheese and smoked salmon. You can see my little chef's perk one, still really hot, but I can't wait any longer. Um, it's looking incredible inside, smells incredible. Nothing better in life than a freshly baked scone.